be a live sir so welcome back to the gate academy so here we are continuing with our series of gate 2021 new additions in the syllabus okay so in this lecture series this is our fifth session this is our fifth session okay before this we have completed our four sessions okay sorry this is our sixth session and we have completed five sessions before it we have completed five sessions before it so this is our sixth session in this series this is our sixth session in this series and and we are covering steam and gas turbines which is added in gate 2021 syllabus in all the respects okay so uh, firstly let me introduce something about myself let me introduce some about myself so who am i so here as you can see on the slide our topic is steam turbine and gas turbine steam turbine and gas turbine okay steam turbine and gas turbine and my name is uma shankar tripathi i am a phd scholar a research scholar that you usually call it a research scholar from iit roorkee i am a research scholar at iit roorkee okay so before joining into the phd program i have completed my mtech from as you can see from uh, iit roorkee itself so for getting admission into iit roorkee i got gate i gave gate 2014 in which i got in which i got 65.66 marks and had a all india rank of 916 okay again in gate 2015 i again in gate 2015, 2015 i gave this examination and i had 77.02 marks with all india rank of 643 all india rank of 643 from last eight plus years i have been with the gate academy teaching in the various centers of the gate academy across india as you know we have 50 plus centers across india of the gate academy okay okay so here this was the brief introduction about me and if in case you haven't watched the previous video so before watching this video please go and watch the previous video for that subscribe the channel subscribe the gate academy english channel as well as we have a hindi channel also subscribe that too because in this in this channel we are giving you so much information that will help you in your gate syllabus okay the notes and all will also be uploaded on the this channel so for notifications you will have to go to subscribe the channel okay so now this is our lecture this is our lecture today is friday so we have we are going to continue with this part impulse turbine part 3 we are going to continue with the impulse turbine part 3 okay so let us briefly see let us briefly see what we have seen till now let us briefly see what we have seen till now what we have seen till now we can briefly see that now now see so till now we
Okay. So there was some technical trouble. There was some technical trouble. So we are moving on. Okay, so we are moving on. So what we have seen, what we have seen till the last lecture, what we have seen till the last lecture that steam turbine is a combination of moving blade and nozzles. Okay, so till now what we have completed, we have completed this nozzle thing. We have completed this nozzle thing. We have completed this nozzle thing. And now, now what we are going to see is that when it leaves the nozzle, when the steam leaves the nozzle, okay? So what we have seen, if it is entering the nozzle at not point and it is going to the moving blade in one point, so how this how this steam is be behaving in the moving blade part, in the moving blade part. So in contrast to that, we in the last lecture we have seen, in the last lecture we have seen the classification of impulse turbine, that is the D-level turbine, that is the D-level turbine, the pressure compounding and the uh, velocity compounding. So we have seen in the last class, if you have not seen that, please subscribe this channel and go and see it. So in the last lecture we have seen, in the last lecture we have seen that how we use, how we use the D-level turbine, what are the problems in that, what are the problems in that, what is a ratio turbine and what is a, what is a cut test turbine, what is the cut test turbine, okay? So now, now we, in this lecture we have we already had the introduction about the d level the ratio and curtis turbine so in this lecture we will begin with analyzing the velocity diagram analyzing the velocity diagram of a impulse turbine we are going to analyzing the velocity diagram of impulse turbine we are going to analyze the velocity diagram of impulse turbine we are going to analyze the velocity diagram of impulse turbine okay so what is an impulse turbine we have already seen that what is the classification of impulse turbine we have seen that so in this lecture we are going to see how we can draw the velocity diagram of an impulse turbine so this thing is common with what you have seen in that in fluid machinery in that in fluid machinery and as we have seen as we have seen that our steam is, good afternoon Umkar, what we have seen that this thing is common, this thing is common in compressors also. There is also a topic known as compressor, which was there in gate slippers already. It was added in gate 2016. So from then onwards, compressors you have to see. So as we have seen previously that steam turbine blades are axial flow, steam turbine is an axial flow device. So about the axial flow thing you already have seen in the fluid machinery part, in the compressor part. So it is somewhat same. So for the sake of completing this topic in all respect, we are going to going to learn the velocity diagram of impulse turbine. Okay. Okay. So how it is, how we are going to draw the velocity diagram of impulse turbine. Now see, see the blades of the velocity, the blades of the impulse turbine, the blades of the impulse turbine, the blades of the impulse turbine, the blades of the impulse turbine are somewhat like this. They are symmetrical. They are symmetrical. Okay, so I think most of you were aware of how to form the velocity diagram of impulse turbine because this is a common part in fluid machinery too. So I will quickly make it, quickly make it. So while, while making the velocity diagram, one thing you must take care of when you are talking about when you are talking about when you are talking about the turbine so your vw1 the whirl velocity what we call it must be greater than must be greater at the entry and it must be less at the exit and secondly secondly this relative velocity what you are making this relative velocity remember these two points of mine this relative velocity must be tangent to the tangent to the corner of this blade okay so whenever you make whenever you make it whenever you make it whenever you make your whenever you make your <laughs> velocity triangle just keep in keep this in your mind keep this your in your mind that keep this in your mind that our 
our velocity triangle should be like this on which the relative velocity the relative velocity should be tangent to the edge of the blade the relative velocity is tangent to the edge of the blade and vw1 must be greater than vw2 so with respect to vector we have we know the velocity is a vector thing and with respect to vector if general i talk about if general i talk about vr is equal to v minus u we know that vr is equal to v minus u we know that so v is our absolute velocity of the steam and u is our velocity of the blade u is our velocity of the blade okay so we can write this like this v is equal to vr plus u v is equal to vr plus u don't take it in a different way i am not saying that in this case vr will be equal to v minus u but in general i am talking the relative velocity is certainly the difference between absolute velocity and the velocity of the blade velocity absolute velocity of the steam and the velocity of the blade okay so if you correlate it with some vector thing you know already if you correlate it with some vector thing you know already so if there are three vectors a b and c if there are three vectors a b and c so a is equal to b plus c a is equal to b plus c a is equal to b plus c okay so if we have to draw this vector diagram what we know what we know that if b is in this direction c is in this direction so a must be the vector who should be closing this triangle okay closing this vector diagram we know this so if let's say if let's say c is in this direction b is in this direction b is in this direction so where should be our a is our a should be like this so c so see different books have different ways of explaining the velocity triangle explaining the velocity triangle some may take this initial the direction of the blade as i have taken some may take the velocity of the blade opposite to this direction opposite of this direction some may take different shape of it somebody will take different entry points that i as i have as i have taken the entry from this point from above some may take the entry from the below point some may change the some may change the direction of velocity so if these point do, will if you remember you won't get confused you won't get confused they are also not wrong and i am also not wrong here okay one can make the velocity triangle in whichever orientation he wants to keeping this some of these things in mind okay so let's say we have to follow this so first point was first point was that the relative velocity must be tangent to the tip of the blade relative velocity is tangent to the tip of the blade so let's say it is u1 let's say it is u1 now why i have made this u1 why i have made this u1 here because because if i am making this u1 here if i am making this u1 here if i am making this u1 here this vector thing this vector thing this vector thing is satisfied this vector thing is satisfied so at entry at entry since v1 is the absolute velocity of the steam and relative velocity is related like this so it is satisfying it is satisfying our general vector procedure general vector principle okay okay at the exit similarly at the exit similarly at the exit similarly at the exit similarly we can say we can say that this is our this is our this is what this is our blade velocity at the exit this is our blade velocity at the exit so how should be the absolute velocity how should be the absolute velocity how should be the absolute velocity so our absolute velocity should be like that that it is closing this diagram it is closing this diagram it is closing this diagram all right all right so while making these three velocities velocity relative velocity u and v1 okay relative velocity u v1 vr and all and all you must remember these points you must remember these points so that you will not make any mistake while making the uh, the velocity triangle in any of the subject you may choose either you go to the fluid machinery you all know we have this impulse turbine there also in fluid machinery okay this kind of velocity velocity triangles you make in the compressor part also and what we are going to study in gas turbine is also we have to make the velocity diagram there so i am not going to repeat it in the gas turbine section when we are going to see it so once for all i am taking care of this velocity diagram thing and how to analyze it and how to get formula out of it so so this is the way this is the way we are going to proceed this is the way we are going to proceed in this lecture 
in this lecture so i am making it again this is what a uh, primary thing what i have told you now when you see the velocity diagram there if there is any doubt in it you may ask those who are live in this session those who are live in this session those who are live in this session may ask those who are live in this session may ask those who are live in this session may ask me if there is any doubt in making this much velocity triangle this much velocity triangle how i am putting the direction of u in this direction because i have assumed the blade is moving in this direction i have assumed the blade is moving in this direction so this must be very much clear to you so if i complete this diagram if i complete this diagram there are certain other components there are certain other components we have to take care of so this is vf1 this is vf1 this is vf1 this vf1 is we what we call it what we call it as the flow velocity this is vf1 we call it as a flow velocity it is nothing but the component of the absolute velocity in the direction of flow or you may say it in the direction perpendicular perpendi it is the uh, component of uh, absolute velocity in perpendicular direction in perpendicular direction okay so at the entry at the entry we have at the entry we have this much is vw1 okay okay when we call it vw we mean as whirl velocity we call it whirl velocity i think this is just if if someone has read the old syllabus already this is just kind of revision for him this is just a kind of revision for him okay so we are going to in this lecture we are going to see we are going to see the velocity diagram as well because it is inherently a part of the analysis of steam turbine inherently it is a part of uh, analysis of steam turbine so vw is the whirl velocity so vw1 one subscript i am using for the entry condition so vw1 is the whirl velocity at the entry vw1 is the whirl velocity at the entry right right v when we call it v when we call it we call it absolute velocity absolute velocity absolute velocity okay absolute velocity okay so v1 when we call it it is the absolute velocity of the jet at the entry and this is absolute velocity of the jet at the exit vr is what vr what we call it it is a relative velocity thing it is a relative velocity thing this is general nomenclature it is a relative velocity it is a relative velocity thing it is a relative velocity thing okay it is a relative velocity thing okay and and what is left u u is the velocity of blade or speed of blade whatever you may want to call it so it is the velocity of blade it is the velocity by which the blade is moving it is the velocity by which the blade is moving it is the velocity by which the blade is moving so if we say if we say vw1 is nothing but the component of v1 in x direction okay so whirl velocity is nothing but whirl velocity is nothing but component of absolute velocity component of absolute velocity component of absolute velocity in in x direction or the direction of motion of the blade whatever you call it so i call it x direction here i call it x direction here vr is the relative velocity you know vf is what vf is what is the velocity of flow is the velocity of flow is a velocity of flow i think these things are very much clear to you and these things are very easy we already have information about it so flow velocity or velocity of flow is the component of absolute velocity in y direction okay whose component it is a component of absolute velocity absolute velocity component in y direction so we are just quickly going to get through it quickly going to get through it so in the exit part of this diagram at this exit at, at this exit point if i take if i take a component of velocity of v2 because what is the absolute velocity v2 we will have the we have the flow velocity in if if i take 
if i take and if i take the the component of v2 in horizontal direction we will have this vw2 we will have this vw2 so depending upon the depending upon the angle of exit of absolute velocity we will have the direction of vw2 we'll have the direction of vw2 so let's just define the angles as well so this angle this angle is called known as theta okay this angle is known as phi this angle is known as phi so what is theta and phi what is theta and phi so we know it theta and phi are the blade angles are the blade angles are what are the blade angles at at exit at exit theta and phi are the blade angles at exit sorry at entry and exit at entry and exit at the entry and exit theta and phi are the blade angles at entry and exit of blade or blade i have already written so it is not necessary to write it again so theta and phi are the blade angles at the entry and exit now remember one thing there is a tip this blade angles whenever we call blade angles always remember this blade angle is with respect to the relative velocity relative velocity relate with this blade angle okay relate with this blade angle so there here you can see vr1 vr2 so vr1 making the blade angle at the inlet so vr1 theta is with vr1 and phi is with vr2 so blade angle is generally related with the uh, relative velocity okay so alpha is what alpha is what alpha is what so alpha is our nozzle angle alpha is our yes blade angle and vane angle is same only uh, manoj smita you are saying sometimes in question vane angle is given sir is it vane is it blade angle yes vane angle and blade angle are the same thing only it depends upon what book you are referring to in some books it is written as blade angle in some books it is referring as vane angle but they all are the same thing no issues in that all right so alpha we call it alpha we call it alpha we call it nozzle angle alpha we call it nozzle angle alpha we call it nozzle angle all right alpha alpha is the nozzle angle okay nozzle angle or if if nozzle is not there if nozzle is not there maybe it is the angle to which the absolute velocity entering to the moving blade so it sometimes may be called the fixed blade angle also the angle through which the fixed blade the entry fixed blade is uh, is uh, exiting the jet yes madhu smita all right all right so so <sighs> so it can be a nozzle angle or it can be it can be we can sometimes call it fixed blade outlet angle fixed blade outlet angle okay we sometimes call it fixed blade outlet angle okay fixed blade outlet angle we sometimes call it okay so don't get worried about it as i told you sometimes in place of nozzle we use fixed blade we use fixed blade okay so if i if i give a name to this angle also beta let's say this angle is beta so how may we name this beta how we may name this beta so beta is the outlet angle of the moving blade it is the outlet angle of the moving blade okay not not the outlet angle of the moving blade we may call it we may call it inlet angle to the fixed blade inlet angle to the fixed blade what does that mean what does that mean so sometimes you have seen sometimes you and you have seen like in curtis stage turbine we have seen that after after the steam leaves 
a moving blade after i steam leaves a moving blade after i steam leaves a moving blade it sometimes get enters into the fixed blade and where it is get deflected so this is the absolute velocity of the jet which is leaving the moving blade and entering the fixed blade so we sometimes call it the inlet angle of the of the fixed blade or we can call it the absolute velocity angle at the exit at the outlet or at the exit so we can call it absolute velocity angle at exit absolute velocity angle at at exit or outlet absolute velocity angle at exit or outlet so all this nomenclature is clear to you all you can reply me this is a very simple this is just what we have read already this is just what we have already information about this is just what we are having the information about yes or no yes or no yes or no so those who are live in this class can reply to me yes or no yes or no so see we had this figure we had this figure so if you have understood the fact that all the other components all the other components are just all the other components are just all the other component are just the components of these v1 vr1 u1 so you can you can simply uh, calculate them by using these data by using these data so let us call it let's let's see it again so we have we have this angle we have this angle equal to theta and we have this angle is equal to phi and we have this angle equal to beta we have this angle equal to beta so there can be an another way there can be another way of making velocity diagram or another way of representing another way of representing velocity diagram so sometimes another way of representing velocity diagram so sometimes what happens sometimes what happens sometimes what happens sometimes what happens that sometimes what happen that this way this kind of diagram is given to you is given to you in the examination and student get confused in this representation so let's just quickly see this representation so in, in impulse turbine see in impulse turbine you may already know it but we are going to mention it here in impulse turbine u1 is equal to u2 in impulse turbine we have u1 is equal to u2 so in impulse turbine what we can do in impulse turbine what we can do in impulse turbine what we can do that we have this u we have this u we have this u okay we have this u and and we have we have this common so just just focus here just focus here we can make it by using this diagram if we know this diagram the uh, diagram which is on the left side of the screen we can make it easily we can make it easily so we have this u we have this u now now you have to just you have to just copy these things over here these things over here so if i copy them if i copy them you see you see we have this we are one we have this vr1 we have this vr1 at a angle of theta at a angle of theta at the starting from the end of the linear velocity okay so how i have made i have just made it here i have just made it here just transfer this to here i don't think there will be a problem in that and this angle is our theta this angle we call it as our theta right so now now if i if i transfer this blue line here if i transfer this blue line here this v1 in this diagram we we may we may draw it like this we may draw it like this that this is v1 at a angle of alpha at a angle of alpha this is v1 this is v1 so i have done nothing i have just transferred this from here to this representation from here to this representation got my point or not got my point or not yes or no got my point or not yes or no now see now see 
if i transfer now see in this bottom diagram if i transfer if i if i just let me do something if i just delete this youtube from here and if i just make it make youtube from here make youtube here will there be a problem will there be a problem so let's check let's check sir you will say you will say you will say that sir that sir there might be a problem so i am i'm just keeping youtube here and just think that i have shifted i have deleted this youtube and i have shifted it over here i have shifted it over here and and so our our vector principle is getting satisfied or not so if i make if i make v2 here if i make v2 here if i make v2 here again our uh, vector principle is getting satisfied again our vector principle is getting satisfied yes or no because see because see what we have learned what we have learned we have learned that the absolute velocity we have learned that the absolute velocity the absolute velocity the absolute velocity must be the absolute velocity must be the closing of must be the closing of some vector thing okay this is how we make a vector diagram okay so madhu smita you are right what i am saying by the principle of vector is that this is how this is how we make the vector diagram in general studies of ours okay apart from this subject or anywhere whenever we apply the phenomena of a vector we make the vector diagrams like this only okay so i am calling it as a principle of vector there is no principle of vector i know as well so this is how you make you this is how you make the vector diagrams in general so i am just trying to correlate it with with it okay so here from here at the exit of view at the exit of view we have our vr2 we have our vr2 so can i draw my vr2 from here can i draw my vr2 from here is that a problem can i draw my vr2 from here so this vr2 this vr2 is the at phi angle this vr2 is at phi angle yes or no this vr2 will be at phi angle okay just just copy pasting from here and here i am just doing the copy pasting i am just doing the copy pasting is that right or wrong is that right or wrong yes or no so where is v2 where is our v2 here where is our v2 here so i must draw you as you can see i must draw i must draw the v2 i must draw the v2 from the starting of you as you can see in the exit velocity triangle and if this angle is beta certainly this angle will also be beta certainly this angle will also be beta this angle will also be beta okay so here is the another representation here is the another representation of velocity diagram that could generally be used that which is generally used which is generally used in case whenever we are reading this velocity diagram thing with respect to with respect to this uh, thermodynamics part okay so this is a another way of representing this is a another way of representing the impulse turbine velocity triangle this is another way of representing the velocity diagram of impulse turbine okay impulse turbine and i am making just this much because you know because you know we can take because you know we can take the uh, for finding the vw1 for finding the vw1 we can take the component of v1 in the direction of u and for uh, getting the vw2 we can take the component of v2 in the direction of u so if i take the component of velocity of v1 in the direction of u in the direction of u it will be go like it will be going like this okay it will be going like this so this much this much is vw1 this much is vw1 okay and if i take the component of absolute velocity in y direction this will be my vf1 this will be my vf1 yes or no yes or no similarly similarly if i go and take if i go and take the component of v2 if i go and take the component of v2 in in x direction as we are seeing here component of v2 in x direction so we have we will have this vw2 we will have this vw2 this vw2 and component of v2 in y direction we can have is our as vf2 so this can be this can be another way this can be an another way of solving or representing the velocity triangle of impulse turbine so is that easy or not either this way is presented to you 
or you have to make it in this way can you do it or not can you do it or not yes or no yes or no yes or no while making the velocity triangle just do cross check just do cross check that all the all the necessities are being satisfied vw1 must be if you are talking about turbine vw1 must be greater than vw2 and if you are talking about the compressor the vw1 must be less than vw2 and our vw2 should be greater because compressor as we know is a power consuming device is compressor as we know is a power consuming device got my point or not is that clear or not till now so this is same this is same what we have read already this is same what we have read already okay this is same what we have read already so now now let us make some calculations so we are not going to derive much but we will write whatever is necessary we will solve some question on it so that it is all peace to you okay so let us let us go through it so if we solve if we get if we try to find that what is the thrust force what is the driving force or you may say what is the driving force so this 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 let let me copy that diagram again firstly let me copy that diagram again so that we can easily be able to understand the concepts okay so let us draw it let us draw it okay okay so let us draw this let us draw this okay let us draw this okay so we have drawn it we have copied it now we, i am writing the formula here so firstly if i talk about what is the thrust force what is the thrust force and obviously whatever we are talking is valid for one stage it's valid for one stage okay okay because as we have seen in our steam turbine previous uh, lectures that sir there can be staging also so whatever we are going to talk we are going to talk about the stage and if there are number of stages are there then we will see what to do with it we will see how we can transfer it okay or obviously if in one stage this much work is produced in n number of stage this much work will be produced you can easily find okay so we are firstly finding the thrust force or you sometimes call it a driving force our driving force why you call it a driving force because because this force acts in the direction of motion so this is the force responsible for this is the force responsible for creating the power creating the power so what we call if we if i if i if i want to find the force in x direction or in the direction of moving let me apply the newton second law of viscous uh, velocity sorry newton second law just newton second law so our newton second law what it suggested that if we have the mass flow rate m dot so if we want to if we want to resolve the forces on the turbine so we shall say v1x minus v2x in general we do something like this okay in fluid machinery in uh, compressor blades we do this thing only we apply the second law so m dot so what is the component what is the component of velocity in x direction at the entry so it is vw1 okay and what is the component of what is the component of v2 in x direction at the exit it is vw2 but as you can see as do, you can see the the diagram we have made the diagram we have made the direction of vw2 is opposite to that of vw1 so i am taking another minus so this is coming out to be vw1 plus vw2 yes or no this is coming out to be vw1 plus vw2 so the thrust force or driving force if we may have to calculate it what we require we require vw1 we require vw2 we require vw1 we require vw2 yes or no so if i have to find now the power generated or the work done per second per stage sometimes sometimes m dot is given as 1 kg per second so that we can power per stage work done per stage all are the same thing but you have to take care about the units so we may multiply we know the power is nothing but force into velocity the power is nothing but the force into velocity so we can say we can say m dot is vw1 plus vw2 m dot is vw1 plus vw2 into u in case of reaction turbine as you know 
we our u1 u2 is not equal in case of in case of what in case of the reaction turbine our vw1 vw2 sorry u1 and u2 are not the same so we'll write like this we multiply u1 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 here and u2 here and we will we will not we can't take common in reaction turbine that we'll see in the reaction turbine when we'll be discussing the reaction turbine thing okay so this is the power or work done we have generated per state we have generated per state what the other formulas we we may want to use or we may be asked we may be asked so if we have to find if we have to find the axial force if we have to find the axial force okay sometimes it is called as axial thrust force okay axial thrust force don't get confused in the game of this english as i always say to you this is also sometimes called as tangential force this is also sometimes called as tangential force okay so axial thrust force axial thrust force we, we, we may named it as fa so it will be equal to m dot m dot so same way same way so it is axial so we may call it v1 y minus v2 y okay so the component of velocity x direction i am assuming as the direction in which the blade is moving and y direction is the direction of flow that is perpendicular to the direction of the motion of the blade so v1 y is what if you see the figure v1 is vf1 v1 y is v1 vf1 this is the component of absolute velocity in y direction and v2 y is vf2 and v2 y is vf2 so we have our axial force we have our axial force is equal to m dot vf1 minus vf2 m dot is equal to vf1 minus vf yes or no okay very easy we are doing this thing in fluid machinery also we do this thing in fluid machinery also okay so what are the important points to be considered what are the important points to be considered while dealing with the uh, while dealing with the uh, impulse turbine so if if it is given that the blades are symmetrical if it is given that the blades are symmetrical which generally are in impulse turbine so if it is mentioned that blade are symmetrical you can take theta is equal to phi theta is equal to phi okay it if it is given that that the blades are if it is given that blades are smooth and frictionless what i am trying to tell you that in what assumptions in what assumptions what consideration you can take in what conditions what considerations you can take so if blade are smooth smoothless i have written so if blades are smooth and frictionless if blades are smooth and frictionless you can take you can take vr1 is equal to vr2 you can take vr1 is equal to vr2 okay if not or we we may say if there is friction if there is friction if there is friction if there is friction you can use you can use you can say that vr2 is less than vr1 because definitely when there is friction definitely when there is friction we will be losing some relative velocity we will be losing some relative velocity and here we can here we can introduce a coefficient to here we can introduce a coefficient to and we call it as k we call it as k and this k this k is generally known as blade coefficient known as blade coefficient or sometimes it is called as blade velocity coefficient okay so this k is blade coefficient so if k exists it is it is must be less than 1 it is less than 1 yes or no because we know vr2 is less than vr1 vr2 is less than vr1 okay what are the other things what are the other things we may require what are the other things we may require what are the other things we may require just a second what are the other things we may require what are the other things we may require is the speed ratio is the speed ratio okay is the speed ratio and this speed ratio is nothing but u upon v okay we already know this 
so this is one another term that can be asked okay there is one is flow ratio one term that can be used is flow ratio flow ratio and that is we know as vf upon u vf upon u so there are so many terms involved you you may have the coefficient of velocity too you may have the coefficient of velocity also you may have the coefficient of velocity also you may have the coefficient of velocity also so these things we generally see these things we generally see these thing is general we generally see in in fluid machinery also fluid machinery also so so if we want to if we want to if we want to find if we want to find that diagram velocity if we want to find that diagram velocity if we want to find the no blade coefficient and blade efficiency are different if we want to if we want to find the diagram efficiency we call it as diagram efficiency so what is the efficiency in general so efficiency in general is output upon input efficiency in general is output upon input so what is the output what is the output from this blade what is the output from this blade this is m dot vw1 plus vw2 into u and input is half half m dot v1 square because 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 in this moving blade in this moving blade the steam is entering with the kinetic energy only okay within within the blade we have seen we have seen in the analysis of impulse turbine and when we have discussed the impulse turbine we have seen this thing that while while the steam flows through the moving blade there is no change there is no change of pressure there is no change of pressure only velocity decreases only velocity decreases true or not only velocity decreases true or not yes or no yes or no yes or no only velocity decreases pressure remains constant okay pressure remains constant so the input to the moving blade input to the moving blade is the kinetic energy that we get that we get that we get at the exit of nozzle and this kinetic energy is going to get converted into useful work so we call it as diagram efficiency we call it as diagram efficiency so here here is the general discussion of the velocity triangle of impulse turbine and here we can solve some questions we can solve some questions so that we have this idea we have this idea of how how we can have it how we can find all these things so let us do firstly this question okay let us do firstly this question so that we have the idea we have the idea about we have the idea about how how we deal with the impulse turbine problems how we deal with the impulse turbine problem so you may start solving this question you may start solving this question those who are live in this lecture and those who are seeing the recorded session recorded lecture or seeing the video of it please subscribe you also please subscribe the gate academy channel the gate academy channel so it is right now necessary to solve some of the question it is right now necessary to solve some of the questions here okay so that we are we have good information about how to solve the velocity triangle question or questions from the concept of velocity triangle so now please start solving this question please start solving this question and find whatever is required find whatever thing is required from here whatever thing is required from here we can do it quickly and in this time those who are seeing the video of it please you also solve this question before i start solving this question then only you come to know that where you have mistake and or anything else all right and please if you have not subscribed the gate academy english channel then do subscribe do support us
so what is in this question so velocity of the steam leaving the nozzle of the impulse turbine is 900 meter per second so what is given to us all of you may please solve this question who are in the live session please solve this question so velocity of steam leaving the nozzle of a impulse turbine is 900 meter per second 900 meter per second to this is this is 900 similar kind of question you also see in fluid machinery or turbo machinery or hydraulic machinery whatever you want to call it you can call it nozzle angle that is alpha is 20 degree so what is given to us and do not trap with this nomenclature do not trap in this nomenclature the blade velocity is 300 meter per second so our u is 300 meter per second 300 meter per second the blade coefficient is 0.7 the blade coefficient is 0.7 yes mother smita very nice very good you have got the right answer the mass flow rate is 1 kg per second the mass flow rate is 1 kg per second right so this all information is given to us this all information is given to us okay this all information is given to us okay so let us draw let us draw let us draw the velocity triangle let us draw the velocity triangle here we cannot remember all this formula we just cannot remember all this formula so what we must do we must draw the velocity triangle so i am copying this velocity triangle i have already drawn i am copying this velocity triangle i have already drawn and we can use this velocity triangle again we can use this velocity triangle again here we can use this velocity triangle again here okay okay so now we have what we have to calculate we have to calculate firstly the blade inlet angle theta the blade inlet angle theta and as it is a impulse turbine train impulse turbine uh, blade so we may consider it as symmetrical as well we may consider it as symmetrical as well so let us calculate first the value of theta so there may be many ways there may be many ways of applying geometry trigonometry so you can apply the way which suits you the most you can apply the way which suits you the most so if we have to calculate theta can i write like this can i write like this that tan theta tan theta is equal to vf1 upon 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 vw1 cos sorry v1 cos alpha or we can write vw1 minus u v w1 minus u1 and u1 u2 is same only so if we can write tan theta is equal to i am seeing this triangle this black and green triangle okay you can also see it this black and green triangle i am seeing so we have this tan theta we have this tan theta so this tan theta is nothing but vf1 upon v w1 minus u1 vf1 upon v w1 minus u1 you can see in this triangle i know all of you would be very good at applying this trigonometry this is a very trivial thing okay so we know that the tan theta is equal to perpendicular upon base okay so we have applied this formula vf1 upon vw1 minus u1 vw1 minus u1 okay vw1 minus u1 all all some someone can do what else someone can do one can say sir we can also write like this sir v1 upon vr1 cos theta yes or no we can do like this also sir vr1 upon cos theta so whatever you way you may like you can use it there can be different ways of applying trigonometry geometry here some will may apply the pythagoras theorem here so there is no problem in any of it so vw1 is what vw1 is vr1 cos alpha sorry vw1 is v1 cos alpha vw1 is vf v1 cos alpha we can certainly see it from the triangle so we have alpha we have v1 can we have the well velocity can we have the value of vw1 at the inlet can we have the velocity of vw1 at the inlet can we have the velocity vw1 at the inlet can someone tell me that can someone tell me that so it is going to be 900 into cos 20 
nine hundred into cost twenty. Yes or no? Yes or no? What is going to be VF one? So VF one will going to be VF one is gonna be VF one is going to be V one sine alpha. V one sine alpha. Yes or no? V one sine alpha. Yes or no? So we have V W one. We have V F one. We can call V F one is equal to nine hundred into sine twenty. Into sine twenty, so we have this tan theta. We have the value of this tan theta. We have the value of this tan theta. So we can apply. We can write all this here. So this will be nine hundred into sine twenty. This will be nine hundred into sine twenty upon 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 nine hundred into cos twenty. You can make the calculations. You can make the calculations. So this is nine hundred into cos twenty minus minus what is our u given to us? So u is given to us as three hundred. U is given to us as three hundred. So from here we can have the value of theta, and it must come out to be twenty nine point four something. So can you cross check the calculation? Can you cross check the calculation and tell me the answer? those who are live in this session can cross check the uh, uh, the calculation and tell me the answer can cross check the calculation and tell me the answer so ashwarya as you are telling me it is coming out to be 29.42 it is coming out to be 29.42 okay so we have this blade inlet angle we have this blade inlet angle now we have to find the driving force we have to find the driving force we have to find the driving force so what is the driving force what is the driving force so driving force we have seen is m dot vw1 plus vw2 yes or no this is what our driving force is so for that i have the value of v1 i have the value of v1 i have this value of v1 now i have this value of vw1 also vw1 is 900 Nine hundred into cos twenty. Nine hundred into cos twenty. Yes or no? Nine hundred into cos twenty. So if from somewhere I can find the value of V W two, I can give my answer. If from somewhere I can, if from somewhere I can find my value of, if from somewhere I can find my value of V W two, if from somewhere I can find my value of V W two. we can have our driving force okay so let's say from where we can find our vw2 from where we can find our vw2 so again there can be many approaches to solve it we are just applying the rules of trigonometry geometry in that triangle and you can have it okay so vw2 is nothing but if i see in the exit velocity triangle so it is vr2 cos phi Minus u two, and we know in impulse turbine u one u two are the same only. U one u two are the same only. Yes or no? V R two cos phi, V R two cos phi minus u two. So we have, we have here, we have here, we have, we have the value of u that is given to us as three hundred. That is given to us as three hundred. Okay. so what is what we do not have we do not have vr2 we do not have phi so phi is equal to theta in this case phi is equal to theta is the, in this case as nothing is mentioned so i am considering it as symmetrical blading or if from here you can take this also that in impulse turbine if nothing is mentioned you can take the blade of impulse turbine as symmetrical or you can say equiangular equiangular what what do we mean by that equiangular what do we mean by that what do we mean by that equiangular that the blade angles at the entry and at the exit are nothing but same at the entry and at the exit are nothing but same so we have we have this phi is equal to theta by considering that our blade is symmetrical by considering that our blade is symmetrical so uh madhu smita i don't have the answers of it we must calculate it here only okay okay so we will we will check the calculations and we'll uh, come to an answer of it i have not written its answer so vw2 we have vr2 cos phi so we have this phi and theta with us so this is 
this is 29.4 degree this is 39.4 degree and now if we can calculate the vr2 we will have our vw2 so we have given as k is equal to 0.7 so what do we know what do we know vr2 is k times vr1 k times vr1 and then i don't know your answer is right or not i don't know your answer is right or not we will see we will see so vr2 is vr2 is k is equal to 0.7 and let's say let's say what is our let's say what is our vr1 so vr1 is vr1 is what how can we find vr1 vr1 is what we have the value of vw1 we have the value of vw1 we have the value of u1 then you can have the vr1 also see see i can write like this vw1 is equal to vr1 vr1 cos theta plus u1 so we have the value of this now we have the value of vw1 as 900 cos 20 900 into cos 20 okay we have the value of vr1 we want to find this value of vr1 and we already have calculated we already have calculated the value of theta matlab isme the as i said as i said i don't have the answer we have to check it okay plus 300 plus 300 so from this equation we can have our value of vr1 yes or no what is the value of vr1 coming out from here can someone tell me can someone calculate and tell me tell me from this equation what is the value of vr1 coming out what is the value of vr1 coming out from this relation can we have the value of vr1 please can we have the value of vr1 please please cross check please cross check so i got my calculator too i got my calculator too because 626.51 okay let me check okay so this vr1 is coming out to be 626.51 as suggested by ashwarya you were giving me different answer previously so vr1 is 626.51 meter per second so now we have the this is the value of vr1 this is the value of vr1 so if any calculation mistake is happening please cross check your uh, calculations so we have this 626.51 here so now now we can have the value of vr22 so this is 626.51 anand okay you have took wrong k see in solving the questions you have to take the data correctly you have to take the data correctly so this is coming out to be some as ashwarya suggested as it is 438.4 meter per second it is coming out to be someone 438.4 meter something so from here if we put the value of phi and vr2 in vw2 what vw2 we are getting what is the value of vw2 we are getting what is the value of vw2 yes you are giving me the right answer of uh, vr1 now tell me please the value of vw2 now tell me please the value of vw2 it's a live session we are doing the question in live so it is coming out to be 81.99 so i am trusting upon what you guys are telling me can someone cross check this value can someone cross check this value otherwise you will say sir the answer is not coming right so please cross check the calculations so this is right this is right <coughs> you guys are only telling me this is right so i am i am following what you have said so this is fd is equal to fd is equal to 1 into 900 into cos 20 plus 81.99 so let's take it 82 so we will have the 
thrust force from this we will have the thrust force from this whatever it is coming can someone tell me what it is coming out to be what it is coming out to be so whatever it is coming i i hope you all may calculate it so it is as you suggested by you all it is 927.38 or something someone is saying it is 71 so don't don't bother about it let it be 927 and what will be the unit the unit will be newton the new unit will be newton okay so what is the driving force coming out what is the driving force coming out out of it it is 927.38 newton so let's see what else we have to calculate so we have to calculate axial thrust power we have to calculate the axial thrust power now for axial thrust power we require what we require vf1 minus vf2 this is the formula we have seen this is the formula we have seen so we have for axial force calculation we have vf1 minus vf2 so we have this as 1 vf1 is v1 sin alpha v1 sin alpha yes or no v1 sin alpha we know vf1 is v1 sin alpha and vf2 again we can calculate by using some geometry we can again calculate by using some geometry so vf2 will be as we can see vf2 will be vr2 sin phi it will be vr2 sin phi Yes or no? We are two sine five. So you can place all these values. You can place all these values. You can place all these values, right? You can place all these value and give me the answer. And can give me the answer? Can you give me the answer, please? So according to you guys, this F is coming out to be ninety two point three eight. please the students who are live please suggest me i am just writing the values you are telling me okay i am not not making calculation by myself so i am trusting upon you so if there is a calculation mistake do tell me but the motive is to make you understand the procedure the procedure of solving the the procedure of solving the problem the procedure of solving the problem of procedure of solving the problem of velocity triangles of impulse turbine okay so what else we have to find we have to find the power so power for finding the power what we can do so we can we can we can do this we know we have a driving force we know we have a velocity so we can multiply the driving force into velocity we can multiply the driving force with velocity and we can have the power we can have the power okay we can have the power similarly for diagram efficiency we have seen the diagram efficiency we have seen so what is the diagram efficiency so we have this diagram efficiency formula we can cancel this m dot m dot here okay so when we talk about a series of blades see listen to me this m dot m dot if you have noticed you can't cancel in when you study impact of jet topic impact of jet topic of fluid machinery impact of jet topic of fluid machinery okay because because in the output it is relative mass flow rate and in the uh, bottom it is the absolute mass flow rate okay so here as this is the series of blades as there are series of blades or series of veins what you what whatever you may like to call it we can cut them down we can cut them down so our diagram efficiency will be vw1 plus vw2 vw1 plus vw2 into u upon half v1 square so i think i have we have all the values of vw1 vw2 u v1 so what you can put all these value and as madhusmita madhusmita you have calculated i don't know what is the answer but i am very much certain that if anyone can place the value and do the calculation will get the right answer so we are not going to calculate it any further so is that clear or not is this kind of question if asked to you we will be able to solve or not tell me that tell me that tell me that now let us solve another question now let us solve another question here so 
i hope you guys know i hope you guys also know i have used this formula in the previous lecture i have used this formula in this previous lecture that u is nothing but pi dn by 60 the blade velocity is pi dn by 60 i have used this formula in the previous session as well i have used this formula in previous session as well okay so we have another question on the screen so you may start solving it the students who are live attending this session who are live and attending this session may may go and solve this may start to solve this question may start to solve this question please begin please begin please begin solving this question so as i am requesting please subscribe the gate academy english channel and hindi channel as well and do watch this series of new edition into gate syllabus i hope who all are live here and watching this video or if someone is watching it after the session is completed i hope your purpose is going to get solved whatever new syllabus has been added in thermodynamics we are we are seeing that okay yes you are asking me sir if the efficiency is to be find out in numerical data type question then how we will enter efficiency in percentage or like 0.68 so if it is a numerical ability question ya yeah, numerical data entry question it will be mentioned there it will be mentioned there don't worry about it it will be mentioned there okay or if it is written like what is the percentage so if percentage is asked you have to answer in terms of percentage so do write 68 not 0.68 because when we call as percentage <coughs> so we must write as 68% but usually it is mentioned got it so please solve this question please solve this question so what is this blade velocity coefficient as i told you what is this blade velocity coefficient this is nothing but the value of k given to us this is nothing but the value of k given to us this is nothing but the value of k given to us yes or no yes or no please solve the question please solve the question i hope you are going to solve it so delivery turbine is mentioned it means what we have only one stage we have only one nozzle and one moving blade so we are using only one stage or just one stage in this problem we have seen the simple turbine in the previous section previous session for that please watch the previous video that what is the level turbine if you want to ask or if you do not know how the level turbine works and about it then please go and watch the previous session as well
please solve this question i am taking a pause here because those who are live must solve this question right now if you are watching the recorded section you also please solve it before before seeing me solving it okay okay then the concept will be very much clear to you then can concept will be more clear to you so those who have live please solve this any answers any answers till now any answers till now any answers till now so some answers are going in so we have the blade angle is equal to 35 34.9 the blade angle is 34.9 as yash ashwarya is telling me madhus meta yours also is very nearby yours blade angle is also very nearby maybe some little mistake or some calculation to see while we calculate in calculator this decimal places sometimes uh, depends upon depends upon how how many digits we have taken after the decimal so i suggest to you you make calculation by taking three digits after the decimal after the decimal you uh, you take three digits after the decimal after the decimal place and write the answer whatever and it whatever form it is coming okay so you have given me some answer that theta is 34.93 that is very good and bf1 is 72.22 ashwarya your first one is right and v1 v1 you are telling me 211.18 it is correct so again it is a d level turbine d level turbine is mentioned so now see now see why i am dealing it it into the new part of the syllabus because this is important this information you require to understand the future topics as we are going to see the cross stage efficiency so i know because i have gone through that same syllabus while preparing for my gate examination and from the 8 years i have been teaching into this gate uh, in these subjects so so see if in exam the delivery turbine is asked to you and you haven't seen its name so you will make mistakes okay so although the approach is similar as we see in fluid machinery but still we have to go through it still we have to go through it and in the next session maybe we are going to see the gross stage efficiency we are going to see the carry over coefficient so these all are the new terms to you which are not there in fluid machinery part which are not there in uh fluid machinery part okay so do watch all the lessons all the sessions okay so now now the level turbine as we know is a kind of a steam uh, steam uh, impulse turbine the level turbine as we know is a kind of steam impulse turbine it's a kind of steam impulse turbine it is a kind of steam impulse turbine so we have we have here we have here as it is a steam turbine we can again copy we can again copy this diagram and we can paste it we can paste it here we can paste it here okay so now let's first see what is given to us let's first see what is given to us what is given to us so we have given with the rpm and we have given with the diameter so from this we have the diameter is equal to 55 cm we have the diameter is equal to 55 cm we have the rpm is equal to 3300 we have this rpm is equal to 3300 rpm we have this speed ratio so let's just call it cu let's just call it cu so you have this as 0.45 you have this as 0.45 you have the nozzle angle that is you have the alpha is equal to 20 degree and the blade velocity coefficient that is k 
it is 0.91 it is 0.91 so it is given that equiangular blade assuming equiangular blade find the rotor blade angle at inlet and outlet and if the mass flow rate is 10 kg if the mass flow rate is 10 kg per second find the power output and axial thrust as well axial thrust means axial force as well so we have this much data given to us so what we can calculate just now from this d1 and n we can calculate the velocity of the blade that is u yes or no we can calculate by using pi dn by 60 so can someone can tell me the value of u so it is coming out to be what it is coming out to be what 95.03 is it or isn't it you may check the calculations so put the value of diameter in meter so that you get the value in meter per second all right all right so once we have the u we can have the value of v1 we can have the value of v1 because we have seen we have seen that our speed ratio is u by v1 our speed ratio is u by v1 yes or no so we can have the value of v1 from here we have this u we have this u so can you tell me the value of v1 can you tell me the value of v1 please anyone so you have mentioned it as 211.18 please do cross check please do cross check i am following what you guys are telling me okay i am following what you are you guys are telling me so now what we want we want theta again like in the previous question we again what theta first so let's see if we can calculate theta tan theta with this much information so tan theta is nothing but vf1 upon vw1 minus u1 yes or no vf1 upon vw1 minus u1 so vf1 is v1 sin alpha so that is v1 sin 20 we have the value of v1 already we have the value of alpha so v1 sin 20 yes or no v1 sin 20 upon vw1 minus u1 so our vw1 we know is v1 cos alpha v1 cos alpha right v1 cos alpha and Minus u, so u we have calculated as ninety five point zero three. So from here you can have your value of theta. From here you can calculate your theta value. So alpha we have it is twenty degree. Alpha we have it is twenty degree. What alpha we are having? We are having it as twenty degree. So we can have the value of theta. and we know that theta and phi are the same because it is given to us that that the turbine is equiangular it is given to us that the turbine is equiangular so we have theta is equal to phi is equal to what we have theta is equal to phi is equal to what so it is equal to 34.92 it is equal to 34.92 degree okay as you have already mentioned so we have done the first part of question we have done the first part of the question so now let's see what is the second part so mass flow rate is given to us and we required to find we are supposed to find the power output so power output is m dot vw1 plus vw2 is equal into u so we have what we have what we have we have this vw1 because vw1 is v1 cos alpha so we have the value of vw1 okay m dot is given in the question that is 10 kg per second it is already given in the question and till now we have calculated this v1 and alpha both the values till now we have calculated this v1 and alpha both so we have this vw1 value we have this m dot value we have this m dot value we have this m dot value okay we have this m dot value right right so we have vw1 we have m dot we have the value of u we already have calculated it and it is 95.03 so what is restricting us what is restricting us to solve this question is vw2 so if somehow we can find the value of vw2 we will have our answer 
if some if by something we can find if by somewhat we can find the value of vw2 we will have our answer so can anybody who has calculated vw2 can tell me can tell me the value of vw2 please can you tell me the value of vw2 please similarly we have done the previous question as well it is almost the same question it is almost the same question what we have seen it is almost the same question what we have seen as we have seen in the previous problem this is almost the same problem so can you tell me the value of vw2 can anyone tell me the value of vw2 vw2 we can we can calculate vw2 uh, yes i think your answer is not correct i think your answer is not correct please cross check so this v1 v1 cos alpha we can definitely place the values and it is coming out to be 198.44 this is vw1 yes you are telling me vw2 that is what i am telling is not correct as far as vw2 is coming to be negative so there is no problem let it come to be in, in negative let it be in negative what is the problem in that if it is coming out to be negative let it be let it be like let, let it be no problem we have written the equation see we have written the equation now now as as you are getting confused in the negative thing so we have written this equation considering this direction of vw2 considering this direction of vw2 vw2 we have considered this direction and we have written our equation we have written our equation so if vw2 is coming out to be negative if vw2 is coming out to be negative is vw2 is coming out to be negative it means what that your assumed direction is incorrect and your real direction is opposite of what you have assumed as simple as that as simple as that so it's coming out to be negative means means your actual direction is opposite to it is opposite to it so we have nothing we have some formulas we can please place all the values whether they are in positive negative just like that we can place and we can have our answer so there is no scope of confusion here is it so vw2 as we may write it as we may write it in the previous question also we have write, written it like that so we are to we are to cos phi minus u2 we are to cos phi minus u we are having we are having so what is this vr2 what is this vr2 so see in this question our blade coefficient is given to us so we know that vr2 is we know that vr2 is k times vr1 k times vr1 so just place all the values here so vr2 is 0.91 because our k is given to be yes ashwarya your uh, answer is correct okay so vr2 vr2 is given we can find the value of vr2 here just wait a second huh? there is some little problem in the some technical problem is here just wait a second okay okay so we come back we have come back on the screen okay now okay now so we are putting we are putting the value of just we are going to put the value of this vr2 is equal to 0.91 is equal to 0.91 is equal to 0.91 into into cos into vr1 so what is our vr1 we have calculated it or we have not calculated it we have not calculated vr1 till now so we have to calculate vr1 also so this much is vr1 no this much is vr1 sorry sorry let's let's just calculate the vr1 let's just calculate the vr1 so vr1 is what we have this vf1 we have this distance let let us call it let us call it x let us call it x okay can we call it can we call it x so let us call it x or we already have we have why we are doing this we have to calculate the value of 
we have to calculate the value of vr1 so if now till now we have not calculated so let it be x let this be x can we say this is x can we say this is x yes or no so we have the value of x from here we have the value of x from here so vr1 we can calculate like this vr1 we can calculate like this that it is under root we are using pythagoras theorem someone can use something else also there is no problem in that we are just playing with the geometry or trigonometry of our triangle so i hope all of you are aware of this that how to apply trigonometry sin theta cos theta pythagoras theorem all this in our triangle so from here vr1 what is vr1 coming out to be it is 126.13 so we have the value of vf1 we have the value of vr1 we have the value of vr1 so we can have the value of sorry we are having the value of vf1 we are having the value of x so we certainly can have the value of vr1 so i am placing all the values here i am placing all the values here so this is 126.3 this is 126.3 minus minus u is given to us we have calculated it as 95.03 95.03 and we have to apply this cos also so this cos phi is if i am making any calculation mistake just do let me know i am just writing what you are telling me in the comments the answer you are telling me in the comments so this is 34.92 this is 34.92 minus u so if you subtract the velocity u it will be 95.03 95.03 so this is coming out to be somewhat equal to 0.93 or 94 somewhat near to it minus 0.93 meter per second so don't worry about this minus sign don't worry about this minus sign minus sign just meant that whatever direction you have assumed the actual direction is not that actual direction is opposite to that okay but the formula we are seeing we have written for this orientation we have written for this of orientation so just place the values just place the values we have mass flow rate is equal to 10 our vw1 we have already calculated and we have calculated it to be equal to v1 cos alpha so what is the value of v1 we are right we have written it as 198.44 we have already calculated the vw1 we have already calculated the vw1 so we have vw1 is equal to 198.44 so plus vw2 so vw2 is 0.93 vw2 is 0.93 with a minus sign so place it as you have solved it as as you have found it okay so we directly have to calculate the power so we are multiplying it with 95.03 now you can tell me the answer now you guys can tell me the answer those who are live in this session can tell me the answer in kilowatt can tell me the answer in kilowatt those who are live in this session can now tell me the answer in kilowatt what is the answer in kilowatt they can tell me the answer in kilowatt Yes, Ashwarya. The answer is one eighty six point one eighty seven point six nine kilowatt. So the answer to this problem is one eighty seven point six seven something like that. So it is the answer that power is equal to one eighty seven point seven kilowatt. And I believe now you can also solve for. the axial truss axial truss you have to calculate fa that is equal to m dot f1 bf1 plus bf2 f1 fa is equal to m dot bf1 plus bf2 f1 bf1 plus bf2 okay so is this discussion clear is this discussion clear are you able to make are you able to make the velocity diagram of impulse turbine and can solve can solve some questions from it so you can refer any book you can find many numericals on it either you can go you can find it in you can find it in 
the R.K. Bansal book of fluid mechanics. Okay, you can find it in P.K. Nag book of power plant. So there are multiple examples. There are multiple examples in various books. I have also taken this example from the books only. Okay, so you may also go and do it. You may also go and do it. Okay, okay. So axial force, I don't know the answer, but I believe you all can find it out. What is the axial force? What is the axial force? What is the axial force? So F A is equal to M dot V F one minus V F two. Yes or no? So some of you are giving me the answer as well, equal to sixty five newton. So you you put all the values. We have the value of V F one. See, uh, we can uh, discuss it. So V F one is equal to we know now. Just quickly, we'll do it. So V F one is equal to V one sine alpha. V F one is equal to V one sine alpha. Hey na? All right. And V F two V F two is equal to V R two sine phi. V R two sine phi. So we have the value of V one. We have the value of V two. We have the value of alpha. We have the value of phi. So you can place this all in here and can solve for the force and can solve for the force. Is that right or not? Is that okay or not? Is that okay or not? Not tell me. Not tell me. So as I said, who the students who are live here, who students who are live here can give me the feedback. Will you be able to solve these kind of questions if asked in gate twenty twenty one examination? So those who are seeing this video or those who are live may feel that sir, this is what we have learned in fluid machinery as well. Yeah, that's true. This is similar, very much similar to what we have learned in fluid machinery as well. But the differences are, differences are that here is staging are there. One thing, while while talking about the steam turbine, as we have discussed in the previous session, in the previous session, we may have the stages while we deal with steam type of impulse turbines generally. We do not talk about staging generally in turbo machinery or fluid machinery. Okay, okay. Secondly, secondly, we have come to know, we have come to know the names, some more names of the turbine that is as in this question, the level turbine was given. So if you haven't read all these things, you won't be able to understand what the level, the level turbine is, and you might make mistakes. You might make mistakes. Okay. So here we are covering so many subjects at the same time. In the previous sessions, what we have dealt, we have dealt with. Flow through nozzles. So in that we also have covered ninety percent of the compressible flow topic that has been added in gate twenty twenty one syllabus. Okay, so almost all the uh, thermal sciences and fluid mechanics part, whatever added in the gate syllabus, we are we are covering it here. Okay, so please also recommend to your friends and all who are preparing for gate examination, who are preparing for gate examination and. Who are trying to get good ranks in GATE 2021? Because see, because see, this year, this year also, I would like to take one minute more here. So this year, uh, IIT Bombay is going to prepare the paper. So if you follow, if you follow, or if you try to see the previous year uh, papers of IIT Bombay, you may find, you may find that that the questions from the fluid sides. And thermal side are certainly more, and they are good questions. They are actually good questions. So there is a lot of scope of asking question from this newly added part of the syllabus that is the steam turbine, gas turbine, and the compressible flow. That sometimes people think that is only a part of fluid mechanics, but compressible flow is, we can say, fifty percent thermodynamics, fifty percent fluid mechanics. So it is the part. Common for both fluid mechanics and steam turbine. Okay, okay. So if anybody of you want to watch full compressible flow, also may go to the Gate Academy Hindi channel. May go to the Gate Academy Hindi channel. Okay, and can see from there complete compressible flow. In this steam turbine, the compressible flow we have covered. is almost 90% of complete compressible flow but it was with relevance to the steam turbine with relevance to the steam turbine that is the design of nozzle 
all right so please recommend all these to your friends also and subscribe to the great academy okay so last thing in this session that we are going to see then we will continue in the next session is the maximum possible efficiency is the maximum possible efficiency is the maximal uh, maximum possible efficiency in impulse turbine so you do this in fluid machinery as well here also it is also a part of this steam turbine so we are going to do it here as well we are going to do it here as well so what is the maximum possible velocity what is the maximum possible velocity of impulse turbine so to calculate or to find it let us let us copy this same image again let us copy the same thing again so i am taking a copy of this i am taking a copy of this so yes you are telling me 50% what is 50% you are directly telling me the maximum velocity or what so we cannot directly just tell the maximum velocity of a impulse turbine we will see how to find it and in what condition we can increase it okay so velocity the diagram velocity in general the diagram velocity in general is what the diagram velocity in general is what it is it is m dot v1 square vw1 sorry m dot vw1 plus vw2 into u this is the output and the input input i am talking about the diagram efficiency so input is half m dot v1 square so from here we can write from here we can write the diagram efficiency from here we can write that diagram efficiency that diagram efficiency is equal to 2 times 2 times vw1 plus vw2 into u v1 square into u v1 square so what i want what i want here what i want here i want to reduce this expression because as we have written something like maximum so all of you must get this idea all of you must get this hint that whenever we have to find the condition of something maximum we have to differentiate it and we have to put it equal to 0 we have to put it equal to 0 okay we have to we have to calc uh, we have to differentiate it and put the expression equal to 0 the concept of maximum minima as we see in the mathematics in the mathematics so for that for that the first thing that should come into our mind is that sir we must reduce this expression we must reduce this expression into into lesser number of variables we must reduce the variables here we must reduce the variables here and ultimately we must make it into one variable ultimately we must make it into one variable in which in terms of which we can differentiate it in terms of which we can differentiate it and put it to you to the zero so that we can find the conditions at which we will have the maximum efficiency we will have the maximum efficiency we'll have the maximum efficiency so we can write like this from this velocity triangle just see we can write like this vw1 vw1 is equal to vw1 is equal to vr1 cos theta let's just let's just write like this can we write like this vw1 is equal to vr1 cos theta plus u1 okay keep correcting me if i make any mistake so vw1 is equal to vr1 cos theta and plus u1 okay and vw2 we can write like as vw2 we can write like vr2 vr2 cos phi vr2 cos phi vr2 cos phi minus u2 minus yes or no yes or no okay and we know we know u1 and u2 are the same only so i am just i am just erasing this one and two factor so from here if we can say from here if we can say that vw1 plus vw2 
VW1 plus VW2, VW1 plus VW2 is equal to, so I have added these two, I have added these two, so it will be equal to VR1 cos theta, it will be equal to VR1 cos theta plus, plus VR2 cos phi, plus VR2 cos phi, yes or no, yes or no, yes or no, okay. I have added these two terms, I have just added these two terms, nothing else, nothing else. Okay, okay, nothing else. Okay, so if I place this in the diagram efficiency formula, if I place this in the diagram efficiency formula, I may write it like I may write it like VR1, VR1 cos theta plus VR2 plus plus. VR2 cos phi, VR2 cos phi into U upon V1 square. We may write it like this. We may write it like this. Yes or no? We may write it like this. Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. Okay. So if I take, if I take, let's say, if I take, if I take VR1 common here, if I take VR1 common here, we are one common here. May I write it like this? May I write it like this? I have taken we are one common here. So, so we may write it like this that we are one, two we are one cos theta plus 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 we are two, we are two by we are one, we are two by we are one. Let's just follow that derivation. Okay cos phi into u upon v1 square into u upon v1 square. Will there be a problem? Will there be a problem? So I don't think so there is a problem in this. So we can say, we can say now, we can say now that, that it is equal to 2 vr1 cos theta, 2 vr1 cos theta plus k cos phi because already we have defined this k blade coefficient already we have defined this k blade coefficient yes or no already we have defined this k blade coefficient all right already we have defined this blade coefficient okay so now we are having we are having we can again take we can again take cos theta as common we can take cos theta as common as well we can take cos theta also common from here. So if we take cos theta is common here, we can have another ratio called as cos phi by cos theta and we call it as x. We call it as x. So another, another ratio we have developed here, another ratio we have developed here, that is cos phi by cos theta. So I, am, I have replaced this cos phi by cos theta is equal to x. So why have I? Uh, why we have done this? Because in order to reduce the equation, otherwise it is looking like very big. Every time we have to write cos phi cos theta by cos phi cos theta, so it, it won't look nice. So to uh, make it look simpler, we have taken this as a ratio x is equal to cos phi by cos theta. So what we can do now? What we can do now? What we can do now? That what we can do now. So we want to reduce it. Now it's still, it's still in this relation, it's still there is in this relation, it's still in this relation, something is unnecessary. Okay, we want to reduce it into basic terms. So let's see the diagram again. Let's see the diagram again. Let's see the diagram again. So in this diagram, we can say, in this diagram, can we say that VW1 is also equal to VR1 cos theta, plus u, plus u, and this vw1 is also equal to v1 cos alpha. These all are the same thing. We can write vw1 in this way, and we can write vw1 in this way also. See the diagram, see the diagram. vw1 is vr1 cos theta plus u, and vr1, vw1 is also v1 cos alpha, v1 cos alpha. So we have just written like this. We have just written like this, okay? So from here, can we replace, can we, let's say this is equation number one. 
so we have we have a value of v r one cos theta v r one cos theta is equal to v one cos alpha minus u v one cos alpha minus u okay v one cos alpha minus u so our efficiency our efficiency is now now we are replacing the value of v r one so it is it is going to be v one cos alpha Minus u. I am just replacing the value of v r one cos theta into. I am just replacing the value of v r one cos theta into equation number one. So we have written the value of v r one cos theta as v one cos alpha minus u, and we have we have one plus k x. We have one plus k x into u. We have one plus k x into u upon upon. upon v1 square upon v1 square okay so now now why i am doing all this why i am changing all these things like this now see now see why we are doing all this we are doing all this because we have to design this blade we have to design this blade we have to optimize the design of this blade so v1 v1 is not in our control it depends upon nozzle it depends upon nozzle yes or no Yes or no? Yes or no? Alpha is the nozzle angle. Alpha is the nozzle angle. Alpha is the nozzle angle. It depends upon the nozzle. It depends upon the nozzle. This k and x are constants. This k and x are constants. Okay. This k and x are constants. So by controlling, by controlling, by differentiating it, by differentiating it with respect to u. with respect to u we can find we can find the condition we can find the condition in which we can maximize this efficiency okay since it is a efficiency since it is a efficiency since it is a efficiency we want to maximize it we want to maximize it as i am always telling you as i am always used to tell you that as a engineer this is what our duty is this is what our duty is so if i reduce this equation we can write something like this we can write something like this v1 cos alpha into u minus u square let's just keep 1 plus kx outside only 1 plus kx outside only and we have this value of v1 square we have this value of v1 square so we have we have this diagram efficiency now in terms of in terms of everything now you see if it in terms of either constants or in terms of u so in order to find that when my diagram efficiency is maximized when my diagram efficiency is maximized i can differentiate it with respect to u because we have only one variable u here so we can differentiate it with respect to u and put it to zero to find the condition of maximum possible find the condition of maximum possible maximum possible diagram efficiency so if i put it to zero if i put it to zero what will come what will come we will have see else it is constant so we will have v1 cos alpha v1 cos alpha minus 2u is equal to zero rest will be zero rest will be zero so so from here we can say that u is equal to v1 cos alpha u is equal to v1 cos alpha by 2 so now now what i am trying to say is now this is the condition where we can attain the maximum velocity this is the condition where we can attain we can attain condition we can attain attain maximum diagram efficiency this is the condition at which we can attain the maximum diagram efficiency so this can be asked in this can be asked in gate questions that at what condition we can have the maximum possible efficiency so it depends upon it depends upon the blade velocity it depends upon the blade velocity so if i put this value u in this equation number 2 in this equation number 2 to find that this is the condition of maximum efficiency then what maximum efficiency we are going to get what will be that maximum efficiency that we are going to get so you put this value of u back to the 
you put this value of u back to the uh, efficiency diagram efficiency formula you will have you will have your you will have your maximum efficiency so let's just put it so we will have v1 cos alpha v1 cos alpha okay already u i am placing u that is v1 cos alpha by 2 v1 cos alpha by 2 just placing the values in equation number 1 minus u square minus v1 cos alpha v1 cos alpha whole of square by 2 okay this is by 2 so bracket will be there and 1 plus kx 1 plus kx by by v1 square by v1 square so from here from here we can certainly say that our maximum efficiency is going to be we can cancel the thing out we we can cancel the things out so we can directly see from here this is coming out to be v1 square cos square alpha by 2 this is coming out to be v1 square cos square alpha by 4 so there will be a 2 so it will be cancel out v1 square will be cancel out with v1 so we are ultimately going to get we are ultimately going to get we are ultimately going to get cos square alpha cos square alpha by 2 1 plus kx cos square alpha by 2 1 plus kx okay okay so cos square alpha by 2 is equal to 1 plus kx so this is the formula that we are highlighting here that we are highlighting here for the maximum possible efficiency and this can be asked this formula can be asked or a direct numerical can be asked from here so please take a note of it please take a note of it so we have the formula of maximum efficiency is equal to cos square alpha by 2 One plus kx, one plus kx. Okay, so if if k is equal to one, if k is equal to one, and x is also equal to one, that means that our blades are smooth and frictionless. Our blades are smooth and frictionless and symmetrical. We can say we can say that our maximum possible efficiency one can attain from one can attain from a uh, impulse kind of steam turbine is a impulse kind of steam turbine is maximum efficiency is equal to cos square alpha maximum efficiency is equal to cos square alpha so this formula you can use only when the k is one the k is one and x is one the k is one and the x is one that is why we say that is why we say that impulse turbine impulse turbine is a simple manufacturing we we have we can manufacture it very simply because you see the maximum efficiency depends upon the value of nozzle inlet angle only nozzle inlet angle only okay so by seeing this someone may say sir why not we put alpha is equal to 0 why not we put alpha is equal to 0 so if you put alpha is equal to 0 there won't be any flow there won't be any flow so this alpha is generally kept between 15 to 20 degree 15 to 20 degree for impulse turbine impulse turbine if it if if somebody will see from this relation may say sir efficiency will be 100% if we put alpha is equal to 0 so we all know cos 0 is 1 but if you put alpha is equal to 0 there will be no flow there will be no flow so it has no meaning it has no meaning so in impulse turbine we mostly use the value of nozzle angle is equal to 15 to 20 degree okay so now this is what i wanted to teach you in this session in this session so we are ending this session now in the next session we are going to see the gross stage efficiency our next lecture live lecture is going to be tomorrow at 10 am okay tomorrow we have having again two sessions from 10 to 12 and from 1 2 3 so there we are going to see the gross stage efficiency the uh, carry over coefficient we are going to see a numerical on that okay after then we are going to move towards our reaction turbine and mostly by tomorrow second lecture our steam turbine will be completed and from the next sessions after that we will move to our gas turbine so today's lecture is very much important today's lecture was very much important as this is common part in gas turbine also so this velocity triangle thing we are not going to discuss in the gas turbine 
what we are when the time when uh, in the next sessions okay so when we deal with the gas turbine thing we are not going to deal with the uh, velocity triangle part okay because gas turbines are also axle flow turbine right so this is all what i wanted to teach you in this session okay i hope you like this video if you like it if you enjoyed it you can tell us in the comment section you can tell us that in the comment section you can tell us that in the comment section okay you may recommend if you like this videos if you are getting something useful after watching this video for uh, two hours duration please do subscribe please do like please do share with your friends please keep us motivated okay so thank you very much we'll see you in the next session thank you